In this video, we will go over the 40 token 400. Uh, but before we do, let's just quickly review the familiar two-factor authentication methods that, that we mostly will, will, will know already, right? So maybe we have a method where, okay, after we put in our correct username and password into our application or maybe VPN, uh, you know, maybe we, we click approve on our, on our phone um, to pretty much authorize that second factor of authentication, right? Or maybe we have... Um, you know, a six digit code that updates every minute on a, a hard token, maybe it's going to be a, um, you know, a keychain or a credit card style form factor. Now, the idea with the 40 token 400 is that we would have a, a USB key physically connected to our PC. And then when we have to apply that second factor of authentication, we're going to be pushing a physical button on the token 400. Now, this approach versus maybe the, the familiar methods that we have um, there could be some advantages to this. So starting with preventing possible phishing attacks. For example, let's say that we're using the six digit code one time password method, right? So let's assume we've accessed an illegitimate website that appears to be legitimate to us. We've entered the correct username and password and we've entered our six digit code. Well, we've you know not really realized that we've actually provided all of that information to, to an attacker and, and they can use that. Uh, now, uh, this possibility gets eliminated by using something like 40 token 400, which is using uh, FIDO. You know, and, and another example could be um, helping with uh, something like alert fatigue, right? So let's say somebody gets our, our credentials, um, username, and password, and then they're trying to access a certain application. We're just walking down the street with our phone. Um, and, you know, while they try and access our application, maybe a, a pop-up comes up on our phone and we, by habit, accidentally just click accept, right? Now, so now we've given an attacker access to, uh, you know, to that application or, or VPN, right? Um, when you have the USB that's connected to your, your PC, something like that can be, can be avoided. And another example is that, you know, maybe it's a little bit faster. Um, you know, if we think about, uh, you know, entering a six digit code, that definitely takes the most amount of time. But if we compare uh, something like this 40 token 400 with FIDO method against uh, a push notification, well, you know, maybe we're gonna log onto our phone, uh, maybe we have a fingerprint, uh, to get into our phone, and then we just quickly hit accept. You know, roughly that that's pretty quick. That might take four or five seconds, right? But then if we're if we're just touching the USB key that's physically connected to our computer, maybe that takes one or two seconds. So that just a small difference there. Okay, so let's get into the configuration. But just before we do, this will assume that you've reviewed um, how to configure SAML on a 40 authenticator, you know, and high level, what is SAML? What does it kind of do? So I've linked a suggested video to our, you know, 40 authenticator SAML authentication video. Have a look at that first if you haven't already. Uh, so yeah, now let's get into this uh, config. Okay, so looking at my SAML IDP configuration, uh, the server address in this example is gonna be fact.fortinet.local um, with port 8082. And then the realm is gonna be local users. And then my default IDP certificate is fact.fortinet.local. And the user we'll test with is fact underscore user. Uh, right now, I'm just making it very simple to config. Uh, there is no FIDO authentication that I've enabled yet. Uh, it's just username, password authentication. And the certificate that I have under certificate management, uh, it'll be end entities, local services. The certificate that I was showing you just a moment ago, it's facvm.local. Okay, and for service providers, uh, we go to authentication, SAML IDP, service providers. Uh, similar to that previous video, we're gonna use two service providers. So one is gonna be this one called FortiGate One Admin. It's the admin login to my first FortiGate. And then it's the admin login to the second FortiGate. So let's just take a peek at, uh, let's just try FortiGate 2 admin. Just take a look at it right here. Uh, so here's a bit of the config there. Um, and then now let's go to the, in the, the, the FortiGate SP, which is this FortiGate 2 admin. And let me just quickly show you the config too. Okay, here's the config that I have here, right? So um, this is information about the 40 authenticator, right? We're using that port 8082. And then here is the server address for this FortiGate that we're gonna be accessing. So let's just do a quick test. First, we'll log into FortiGate 2, then we'll log into FortiGate 1, just to kind of give us a refresher of that previous video. Okay, so sign in with Security Fabric on FortiGate 2, um, FAC user 1, put in the correct password, and 
and I'm in. There we go. Okay, so I'm in via SSO. And then let's just do the same thing for FortiGate 1. We click the sign in with Security Fabric right away as before we're in. Okay, perfect. Okay, now let's add a FIDO uh, 40 token 400 uh, to this FAC user 1. Right, so if I click FIDO authentication, I can register a FIDO key and I can proceed right here, right? This might be more useful if, you know, maybe the, um, the, the IT administrator that manages 40 Authenticator, if you have all the tokens in front of you and you're going to physically distribute them and give them to the end users, this might be the approach you take. Another approach, though, is, is the self-registration. So we could actually provide that onus onto the user so that they register um, their own FIDO key. So in this case, let's go through the self-registration just quickly here. And as part of the self-registration, the thing that we would have to make sure of, though, is that at least FIDO authentication is enabled on the user. So we don't need to register the key right now, but this does have to be enabled. So let's click OK. OK, and to do that, let's go to Portals, Portals, Create New. Uh, let's type in Token Reg, uh, and then we're going to do Token Registration here, and then let's enable Allow FIDO Token Registration. Okay, and then let's go to the policies, go create new. We'll call this token reg as well. And then the portal is gonna reference that item we just created called token reg. Okay, and then we're going to say, yep, yeah, local users will be the realm. Next, save and exit. Okay, now let's click back into that item there and then let's copy this URL. One more thing, if we go to system, administration, system access. I've made sure that the HTTPS certificate is fact.fortinet.local. This is gonna be the FQDN that I access the 40 authenticator with um, to access that self-service portal. It's also the same FQDN that I have uh, referenced in the SAML configuration as well. Um, I found that this was actually quite important. Otherwise, you'll notice certain issues such as problems uh, registering the, the token to the 40 authenticator via the self-service portal, or even uh, problems uh, logging in via SAML. So that's just one thing to really keep in mind and consider. Okay, so let's open up a new tab now, and then let's enter those credentials. Okay, and now I'm logged into the self-service portal as FAC user one. So note at the top here too is there's no certificate errors and I'm accessing uh, the 40 authenticator via the self-service portal using the FQDN. So everything looks good up here. Uh, important to note, note that. If you have certificate errors, you might run into issues. Now, you can also see in the bottom right of the screen that I already have the 40 token 400 uh, connected to the computer. So now once I go and I click 40 token here, then I'm going to add a FIDO key. I'm going to name it my token one. Okay, and click OK. Okay, and then I enter my security key pin. In my case, it's just one, two, three, four. And then you can see it's blinking. See in the bottom right there, it's blinking. I just touch the 40 token key, and now I've successfully registered. So I can go back to the main page and log out. Back to the 40 authenticator. If we go to authentication, local users, FAC user one, we can see that registration that the end user did. So we can see that now on the on the administrator side too. Okay, so now what we have to do as a final step here is go to the service providers. We'll go to FortiGate one admin. That's gonna be our first service provider that we're gonna test with. Um, we're gonna change the authentication method to FIDO only. I'm gonna say, okay, yeah, you can use password and FIDO authentication. Um, and then click OK there. And then we'll do the same thing for the second service provider, which is FortiGate 2. So we'll go password and FIDO. Oops, OK. Let's go back in. I missed something there. Uh, OK, uncheck. There we go. OK, now let's test it out. All right, on FortiGate 1, click sign in with security fabric, um, fac underscore user 1. Click next, put in the password, 
click login. And then I enter the security pin, one, two, three, four, click OK. And then I touch the security key or tap it. There we go. OK, now I'm logged into the FortiGate. And then it's same as just any other SAML configuration. When I go to FortiGate 2, as expected, I should just be able to click it to, to get through and then be able to access the FortiGate. Okay, and I think it's worth it to show maybe just one more use case. So I'm not really providing any config for the 40 Authenticator or FortiGate in this case, but just an example of what you can set up. You can always take a look at Fortinet's documentation to, to be able to find out how to configure this, but you can create a, a VPN, like a remote access VPN on 40 client. I'm um, just gonna show you the settings here. Here's the FortiGate's IP. Here's the SSL VPN port of the FortiGate. And I've said enable single sign-on for VPN tunnel, as well as use the external browser as a user agent for SAML user authentication. This specifically here is going to allow us to be able to use uh, the 40 token 400 as well. So I'll click SAML login right here. And then we can see that I immediately get redirected in um, Chrome to be able to type in my username, same as before, type in the password, followed by the four digit security pin, and then take a look at the token down there, same idea, click it to authenticate. And then now we just give it a moment to fully connect and uh, we should be connected to uh, the 40 gate via VPN in, in, in just a moment here. There we have it, now we're fully connected. All right, thanks for joining this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, thanks for joining this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one.